what's up guys? So I'm sure by now you've heard about the latest expansion for Armada, the Corellian Conflict. So this is a, uh, a campaign expansion. And it's really cool because it's a cardboard only expansion. And I don't know, you know if you really are reading too much into that, if you were hoping for ships or if you were hoping for more plastic or more, um, you know, basically more painted plastic. But what's really cool about this is that it's not. And I'll tell you why it's not uh, at the end of the video. It's very, very cool. But let's, uh, in case you haven't heard about it, it's a uh, two to six player expansion. It's uh, designed to be a campaign that you will run through multiple missions and uh, with consequences that will carry over from mission to mission. So maybe if you beat a mission flawlessly, then you get an extra reward on the next mission. Or if you lose all of your ships, then you're going to be at a severe disadvantage in the next, uh, in the next mission. So it's going to cause you to make different choices than you would normally make in a normal 400 point game. Uh, so, I mean, we don't have too many details on the specifics of the campaign, but there are certain, uh, you know, like certain planets that you might take over. There's going to be a map uh, that will kind of guide you through the campaign. And so, uh, you know, if you don't know what we mean by campaign, basically you're going to be, like, one person will be rebels, one person will be imperials, or it'll be a team of rebels versus a team of imperials, and you will keep building on the same squadrons. And, like, imagine you are in charge of your own actual armada and you're going to keep adding ships and upgrading your fleet from mission to mission. Oh, if we capture this, you know, this shipyards, the Kuat shipyards for example, well now we can manufacture an extra star destroyer for the next mission, you know. Or I mean I'm paraphrasing, but that's kind of the gist of it. Um, so it's going to be MSRP at 29.99 um, and that's really good for an MSRP because that's the most you'll pay for it. So chances are if you get your stuff on sale or at a, uh, an online retailer, you're going to get it even cheaper than that. So I, like, I usually get a lot of my stuff from uh, like Sci-Fi City, local here in Orlando, or, uh, or Cool Stuff. And uh, Cool Stuff and Sci-Fi City both usually have sales on these things. So uh, great, great opportunities to get this stuff very cheap. Why is this you know, important to you if you're not interested in, in, you know, in, a, uh, in a campaign? Well, there's also a whole bunch of extra stuff you can get for the core game in here. We're also going to get 12 new objectives. Now, this is pretty cool. There's some very interesting objectives in there, and I didn't know if they were ever going to add any more objectives. So this is, for one, this is telling us that, yes, the game, they are open to making new objectives for the game. Uh, so one of the new objectives we're going to get, they give us a little preview. You can see one of each of the types. So there's a jamming barrier. Um, there's, uh, basically, it's... You get to draw, the second player gets to draw basically a little line on the board and then blocks half the dice that go through it. So it's great if you're a rebel player, maybe you want to play that just in case you face some Star Destroyers and you can block their frontal arcs. And you also got Salvage Run. So Salvage Run is, uh, you know, you put a station in the middle of the board and, you know, the second player gets to put a bunch of objectives near it. Um, that one doesn't seem that different, but you're adding some new objectives like the Dust Field. You know, you also have a second station that comes with this game. Uh, the other one we saw is Station Assault. Now, Station Assault is going to use two stations, which is amazing. Uh, Station Assault basically uh, has them non-active, and one player wants to blow up all the stations. The other player wants to keep those stations uh, alive. So there's some, you know, some very different type of stuff that we can see with these new objectives, and it's uh, it's very cool. Um, now we I talked about we're going to have some new squadron cards. Now these are really really cool. So the new squadron cards we're going to get is, there's 16 of them, and it's, we, if you think back to like wave one, we had 16 different types of, um, well, we had eight different types of squadrons, right? You had four on each side. You know, TIE Fighter, TIE Interceptor, TIE Bomber, and uh, TIE Advanced on the Imperial side, X-Wing, Y-Wing, A-Wing, B-Wing on the Rebel side. Uh, and from what it looks like, it looks like there's going to be two of each. They're all going to be unique. Uh, but it, lo it looks like one of each is going to have um, a, a named pilot, and one is going to be just a unique uh, elite squadron. So for some of the examples that we get, we've seen uh, Sienna Ree from Lost Stars. Uh, her artwork was detailed on the Star Wars show a while back. She is now, you know, leaked, and um, she is a named TIE Interceptor Squadron. And she, as you can see, she's got, um, she's just fantastic. Attacks against her are going to be obstructed, so... She might be a really good uh, lone wolf type squadron to go after big ships, and they, you know, especially any ship with only one anti squadron die would never be able to take her out. So that's really cool. Um, you've also got Black Squadron, okay? Black Squadron has counter and escort, with, but loses swarm, but it's only nine points. Now, counter and escort is a great combination, so Black Squadron is just insane, and I'm really excited to see, you know, um, how Black Squadron works in play. 
Uh, we've also got uh, Rogue Squadron. So Rogue Squadron is, uh, it's got Rogue. It doesn't have Escort. So, uh, you know, that's pretty cool. Some X-Wing players are pretty sad that we're finally seeing Rogue Squadron in, in this game and not an X-Wing, but, you know, that's, that's still pretty cool. It's also been leaked that we're going to have Biggs. Uh, so he was going to, uh, he's going to show up, so that's very cool. Uh, it's also, uh, you can see on the back of the box from, uh, from Star Wars Celebration, I think this was taken at, uh, that you can, you can see the Shara Bay is also one of the, one of the pilots that we're going to see. And she was, uh, she was from the comic books, she's actually Poe Dameron's mother. So, I imagine, similar to X-Wing, how we had the ARC-170 and it took a whole bunch of pilots from the books, I wouldn't go. I would imagine that we may see some of those same pilots now showing up in Armada, uh, because we've already seen Shara Bay, and she is also in one of the, you know, uh, the, the Arc One Seventy in X Wing. So I bet you we'll see some similar stuff in uh, in Armada. So yeah. So so why I was why I was saying this a cardboard expansion is really cool because it really this opens the door for them to get stuff out much faster. Uh, if you don't, if you're not aware, the biggest holdup they have right now with getting us new Armada and X-wing and, and and any of these really awesome miniatures is that they take a long time to manufacture. Uh, they don't take quite so long just to print the plastic, but like with some of these things, they have to also print them in multiple pieces and then they have to be assembled. But not only that, they also have to be painted, and painting these ships is very time-consuming. Uh, I don't know exactly how Fantasy Flight does it, but most. Uh, I've done some research, and most of the miniatures and, and, and toys and figures and things like that that have these incredibly detailed paint jobs are done by hand. They're done with stencils, where somebody will hold it up and put one stencil on there, spray all the black on, and then they have to let that dry, and then somebody has to come back later and now spray all the red on, you know, and it has to be perfect. And, and, and these, it's very time-consuming because they're all done by hand. Um, so it, it, that's why... You know, Imperial Assault stuff is able to come out so much faster than X-Wing and Armada because they don't have to have all their stuff painted by hand. They let us do that, and that's fine. Um, but anyway, a cardboard-only expansion is awesome because they can print these things and then just ship them right to us. It, we can be out so much faster. It's also cheap. You know, we were getting 16 new pilots, so it's going to really influence what we can do with, uh, you know, with the squadrons now. I'm not a big squadron person, but I love new options. And I, I, I personally like to only, if I'm going to run squadrons, I only like to run like four tops. So, uh, so having more options is great for me because I can still fit those into those four. Um, but how many squadrons do you like to run? Are you a big squadron person? How much do you think this is going to influence your, your game? And how much do you think something like this is going to influence the meta? And are you looking forward to the possibility of more um, cardboard and, and card only expansions in the future. So thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think guys and I will uh, as always like and subscribe. I really appreciate it and let me know what you think in the comments below. Have a wonderful day.